there is obesity obviously is running rampant and i believe that the obesity is the cause of disease but what we eat causes obesity and causes disease and maybe you could talk a little bit about obesity the glp1 drugs whether or not you think that's the solution we should all be jumping towards yeah so really fair question and it's so timing uh timely right now with the uh incredible uh explosive interest uh, in the GLP med uh, one medication uh, arena. And uh, look, you know, we, we can't be in denial that people are losing weight, but we can ask the question, well, what, you know, if they're losing weight, their numbers are going down on the bathroom scale. Uh, could we uh, really investigate what they're actually losing? And, uh, and studies that are emerging, we're actually seeing the loss of muscle mass going back to what we were talking wow. about earlier, sarcopenia, and in one study as high as 40%. Well, let me ask the man or woman right now, I will beg you, I will enjoin you, I will exhort you, I will, I will ask as sincerely as I can, would you please get an MRI to see what's going on in your body? If you care about your body and you care about health, you don't want just to see a number go down, are you shrinking your muscles that you're going to need to walk and lift up your grandchildren and carry groceries. Um, this is being ignored just for the sake of saying people are losing weight. Well, what are they losing? In one study, it was loss of heart tissue. My God, wow. you know, your heart is an unbelievably critically important organ. Do we want to stand by in the face of demonstrated loss of myocardium and ignore this. No, we have to speak to this. So I challenge everybody uh, that's that's taking that medicine to quickly get an MRI and watch what's happening on the inside. Just because your figure is shrink, shrinking doesn't mean that's a good thing and you should be taking those medicines. Watch how you would shrink and your life would improve if instead of taking medicines, you simply a good, healthy, nutritious meat. Is meat a a really the the? I think we should patent meat. And 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 let's patent meat just like they're patenting all these GMOs and and they're patenting all these other uh, uh, concepts and ideas, and and ultimately it's. Isn't it just so simple? We don't need to spend all the money on all of these testing. Is there a simple, simplified that we can help every human on this earth simply focus on a meat-centric diet, minimize and or eliminate plants that they can get many of those same uh, uh, improvements that they want to see by instead of taking a drug? No, I completely agree. You know, the power and the allure the temptation, the draw of taking a pill is so strong that I am almost on a daily basis wondering if there's some kind of a, a, a radical mutation that entered into the human genetic pool that causes people to prefer pills over their lifestyle. Because, Rob, it's so compelling. People will just always seemingly uh, prefer a pill to change in their life. It's remarkable how powerful this predilection and preference that, that is out there for pills rather than changing your life. And it, uh, so I'm always wondering, is it genetic? Did a mutation happen that slipped in there that causes people just to hold out their hand for a pill instead of changing their lifestyle and their diet. It's the plant. The plants slipped in the the simple uh, DNA change or the pill poison from a plant, which is making us so, I mean, again, who's says, oh, I'm hangry. I gotta have a piece of meat. No, you wanna, you want, you're looking for carbohydrate plant material that somehow does something to our brain to keep us in line. And, and that might be simple. So I say, now you are to me, the visceral fat guy, the MRI guy, 
and the uh, sprint like Sean Amara. And I always, I always say, listen, I recommend uh, fatty meat, generally one meal a day, lift the weights and sprint like Sean Amara. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about why you think the 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 uh, lifting weights, the motion, and the sprinting is so important for everyone's health and wellness. Yeah, I will. That's a great question. You know, because um, you know we 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 have two systems: sympathomimetic and parasympathetic. The more you stay in the parasympathetic, relaxed state, the less disease you have. Uh, if you have too much of an abundance of sympathomimetic, uh, the more inflammation and disease you get. And so you want brief, powerful moments of sympathomimetic charge. And that happens, Rob, from a fight or flight scenario. You're either going to open up a can of kick ass or you're going to get out of dodge as fast as you can or get to that fight because you're going to lose uh, a family member, a friend, a child, somebody that's in a threatened situation. And so sprinting and fighting are done quickly and short. And so we noticed when we studied the introduction of uh, sympathomimetic, brief hermetic uh, forms of exercise, like sprinting and lifting weights in a condensed, maximally intensive manner, short period of time, that disease fled the body the most and when you adopt an approach of like more endurance running, longer workouts, that uh, disease um, abounded more. And so you really want to have fight or flight. We learned about this in medical school, uh, why we didn't uh, leverage it to, for the sake of uh, proving our, our patients probably go back to our earlier discussions, that 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 type of application wasn't helpful for our model, which is trying to exploit disease. So I think it's really important to have a practice, a maximally intensive exercise, fight or flight, and it goes down to your form of muscle. I mean, you got basically two fibers, types of muscle in your body, slow twitch and fast twitch. And the one is completely aligned with your quality of life and that is the fast twitch, allowing you to pick things up like groceries, to hunt, to pick up your children, to get your, your, your butt out of a chair and to be able to walk without a walker. And that, those are your fast twitch muscles and not the slow twitch that you get from endurance chronic exercise. So there's this alignment, lots of runners and distance cyclists they love plants and vegetables and carbohydrates. And the carnivores, we fight, we hunt, we sprint, we work out, and it aligns better with that lifestyle. So the difference between these plant-eating, carb-loving, processed food-consuming vegans um, compared to the carnivore-centered uh, meat and fat uh, exercise, lift weights, sprint in a condensed manner is going to become more and more glaringly obvious and hopefully will attract more people to our camp and they'll be less able to talk uh, over a period of time because they're just going to look. I don't know how you want to go back and hang in their campfire because they look so bad and the carnivores are looking so good and living better. So I just think we're early in this thing, Rob. Um, it's it's going to continue to, to get better and uh, we cannot uh, we can't give up the fight. We got to remain undaunted. And social media is giving us the opportunity to get this kind of content and the, this truth out there that otherwise is not going to be shared within conventional healthcare. 